Everyone is in hurry up offense mode right now, getting ready for SK Ad Network. There's new capabilities just in the last week or so. So of course there's new SDKs from everyone and not much time. And of course we have very differing readiness levels from all the different ad networks and various industry players and a lot of frustration. I'm with Aron Friedman, who's a CTO of Singular, and he's been working with Singular clients closely on SK Ad Network. Aron, what are you seeing? Well, uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of uh, advertisers and networks uh, working closely on starting to work with SKI Network, a lot of kind of super interesting conversations on conversion models, how to optimize the best way, uh, how to actually check the data and make sure it's accurate. Um, so definitely it feels like it's uh, kind of the stages of exploration and the testing with, uh, yeah, with this framework. Uh, definitely a lot of challenges as well, but uh, yeah, a lot of interesting conversations. Absolutely. And lots of challenges like you mentioned and testing. And yet we know that this could be totally turned on uh, tomorrow, uh, potentially, uh, more likely sometime in March. Uh, we don't know exactly what that time is, but we know it's getting here quickly. And we're seeing some maybe urgency, maybe almost panic from some players. Uh, we'll, see, we'll, we'll let you pick the words there. What are some of the core challenges that you're seeing from some of the partners that you've been talking to? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of these, um, you know, kind of in, the, in retrospect, I think that uh, kind of in the past few months, there was a lot of conversation on like, like how to think about conversion models, right? It's a completely new way to kind of think about optimize, what are the events you need to rely on? How do you optimize by these? Uh, but it was kind of like on more like the theoretical level, like what's the methodology? Now the challenges have kind of changed to like the actual practice like getting SK network prospects in the wild, making sure that the data is accurate, that you can rely on it. Uh, a lot of kind of debugging and analysis processes with the partners. Um, so uh, kind of two examples maybe for it is, uh, like one of them is basically like getting enough prospects to optimize. And one of the issues that are kind of very interesting to see is the supply side, basically the publishers haven't all uh, implemented SKI network rate, right? It takes time until each one of the publishers, one by one, kind of implements it in the best way. And that basically means that there is less uh, inventory to work with that customers or advertisers are used to. So there's a lot of work in trying to increase the coverage in the supply side to make sure that you have enough data. Yes. Um, yep. Another maybe example that's kind of worth mentioning is like the whole concept of the privacy thresholds of like until you start getting conversion values and source app IDs. So there's like there's a lot of super interesting analysis that can be done on kind of trying to understand how much, how many clicks and insults do you need to drive to start getting uh, data for optimization essentially, right? So definitely kind of a challenging part on its own as well for advertisers and partners. Do you have some early indicators right now of what that number or scope or scale is? And, and Apple has very carefully not released that data, not released that information, right? So people can't necessarily know that. I know that uh, for differential privacy in other contexts, Apple has used cohorts of 5,000, for instance, right? And if something similar is happening here for SK Ad Network, that means that you know you need to be working at scale to even start seeing some of this stuff. Do you have any guesses as to how big the cohorts might be or how high the numbers need to go before we start seeing data from SK Ad Network postbacks? Right, yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it's a question that a lot of companies are trying to figure out right now. There are definitely guesses in kind of various ranges. Um, I wouldn't kind of try to uh, kind of Point, point like this is the specific number that's it's, it's, again it's fascinating analysis but i think uh companies are trying to figure it out uh what i would note is that it's apparent that there are different privacy thresholds to the different parameters basically you can see that conversion values have a different threshold and sometimes they can show up separately from the source app id some post -backs, some post -backs can have a source app id but no conversion value and vice versa some post -backs can have conversion value but no source app so Definitely, we can see kind of multiple mechanisms going on. And uh, again, it's going to be interesting to kind of dive in more. That into is very interesting. And actually, I mean, I've been immersed in SK Ad Network, not as much as you, obviously, but immersed in it for the past, you know, six, nine months, whatever it's been. 
But that's the first time I've heard that is that it's not just about the raw number of post packs, it's about the data in each post pack as well. Because if there's only 50 installs from one source app, well, then you might have a pretty good sense of who those might be and it, uh, vice versa, right? Very interesting insights. So what are the solutions here? I mean, uh, in, in some sense, um, you're working with partners and publishers and supply partners to get as many people up and running. Uh, what else can be done? Uh, yeah, of course. So, you know, like the first thing that uh, or obviously uh, uh, I can recommend is uh, like you need to first of all make sure that you have solid infrastructure to be able to test these and kind of be able to analyze the data properly and start kind of building on top of it. Uh, you know, we've worked with like the top, we've been working with the top partners to get all their raw postbacks from them, additional information that we can match with those postbacks and make sure that everything is accessible um, to basically the advertiser for analysis, right? So of course, that's kind of the first step. Make sure that you can actually, you know, get access to the data. Yes. Um, yeah, and I guess kind of maybe kind of building on top of that is, um, you know, start with kind of the small, simple test and then build on top of it. Because again, there's like the supply coverage, there's like the whole timer mechanism with the whole postback delays, it just makes things more complex. So the best practice that I've seen that's working with advertisers is they start with a very simple conversion model, right? Usually a very short window, let's say of like one day, track very simple events, see how many postbacks you get, understand kind of your baseline benchmarks, and then iterate the models from there. And I think that definitely helps the, uh, basically the, tests and the analysis later on. Great way to get started. Okay, so people are in the middle of it right now. If they need help, where should they go? Yeah, so of course, uh, we're always uh, happy to both consult and also like assist with any kind of tools and uh, abilities. We're, we're basically building the practices on our own. So we're happy to hear uh, you know anyone who has kind of questions or challenges with either like debugging any issues or trying to understand what does the, what does the data mean we're, again, we're working closely with all the top partners there, and we're happy to kind of hear if they can assist any advertisers that are trying to figure it out. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to Singular, and we'll be happy to help. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ron.